Hello and welcome to India Today So South. I am Gautam Shankar. The BJP has making severe efforts to breach the state of Tamil Nadu and they have not spared any efforts and this time they have announced their intent by announcing the third list of BJP candidates where we ha uh, will now see the state BJP chief Annamalai who will be enter entering the Lok Sabha fray. So Annamalai will be contesting the Lok Sabha polls from the seat of Coimbatore. Now not just Annamalai here, we have other contestants as well who will be talking about in detail. So Tamil Sai Sandarajan, she will be contesting from Chennai South. Pun Radhakrishnan has got the BJP ticket from Kanyakumari. Union Minister El Murugan will contest from Neil Giri's constituency. But among all the candidates here, you have to take note that Anna Malai will be contesting elections. He will be uh, in the poll fray this time. He will be making his Lok Sabha debut from the seat of Coimbatore. And besides him, we also have Tamil Sai Sandar Rajan who will be contesting from Chennai South. Pun Radhakrishnan has got the BJP ticket from Kanyakumari and El Morgan who will be contesting from Neil Giri's constituency. So let's talk a bit about why the seat given for Annamalai is quite significant. Now following a swift rise through the BJP ranks with him becoming the youngest president of Tamil Nadu unit in 2021, the 39 year old's name is, has been has now featured in BJP's list of candidates. It is yet another remarkable achievement for the former IPS officer. He is known for his take no prisoner style uh, and has also taken on the ruling DMK on several fronts in Tamil Nadu. And uh, while Annamalai may not have any electoral success to flaunt in his CV, his aggression has given the party a big boost. Annamalai believes that after taking charge as the BJP president, his activities have included Enman and Makkar Padayatra and that has basically helped him reach out to the people and the masses in all the 234 constituencies. Though it initially ignored ADMK, the BJP national leadership has sent a message to the ADMK as well and uh, where they basically put all the efforts made by Edipadi Parnishwami were pushed aside and they have stuck with uh, the uh, uh, with Annamalai. So the battle, line, battle lines have definitely been drawn in Tamil Nadu which will vote on April 19 in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. The BJP's alliances have been finalized and its seat sharing formula has also been worked out by BJP State President Annamalai. The big question that now needs to be answered is will BJP really outperform ADMK in the 2024 Lok Sabha election? Will the ADMK and BJP contesting separately? Uh, will the TN political scene witness strong triangular fights? And will we see several surprises? So now let's take a look at the seat sharing formula of the BJP. Now Annamala has made it clear that BJP will contest from 20 seats. Anbum Anbumani Ramdas's PMK will contest from 10. TTV Dinakaran's AMMK from 2. TR Parivinder's IJK from 1. Tamilaga Makkal Munetra Kalagam TMMK from 1 and this will be contested by John Pandian PNK from 1 which will be contested by AJ Shanmugam and uh, others also include the Tamil Manila Congress and O Panir Selvam who are likely to get between uh, 2 to 3 seats as well. Now will we see the NDA re perform re remarkably well this time? In the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, ADMK, D BJP, PMK and DMDK and the new Tamil Nadu formed a mega alliance. Although the BJP won at the national level, the alliance wa was only able to win the Thani constituency. But will they be able to see a much better performance in this election? To discuss more on this, uh, I have uh, I basically spoke to ETB Sivapriyan, who is a senior political journalist from Tamil Nadu, who shared his views on the matter. Take a look. Uh, so friend, uh, just before I start off, let me just uh, see if I've got the seat sharing formula of the BJP right here. Uh, so Anamana has said that BJP will contest from 20 seats, Anbhavani Ramdas's PMK uh, 10 seats, TTV Dinakaran CMMK 2 uh, and IJK from 1 and TMMK 1 uh, John uh, and PNK uh, of a AC Shanmugam has also got one seat. So that uh, more or less adds up 20 plus the rest of the allies, uh, I think 36, right? So also that we need to take into consideration OPS faction as well and uh, another uh, minor party. So with all of this uh, developments here, do you feel uh, Annamalai has managed to successfully woo away the ADMK's allies and uh, will they really manage to uh, uh, not just outperform themselves what the, the kind of... Uh, 
uh, uh, seat share and vote share that they got in the last Lok Sabha elections. But uh, will they be able to uh, do better than the ADMK itself? At least uh, that as a target for BJP. See, Gautam, there are two ways of looking at it. One is the BJP High Command and the BJP State Unit led by Mr. Anna Malai has successfully outdone the ADMK on the alliance question. So they have successfully weaned away most of the alliance partners who contested under the ADMK leadership to the BJP leadership. Uh, uh just before I start off, let me just uh, see if I've got the seat sharing formula of the BJP right here. Uh, so Adamana has said that BJP will contest from 20 seats. Anbhavani yeah. Ramdas's PMK, uh, 10 seats. TTV Dinakaran CMMK, 2. Uh, and IJK from 1 and PMMK 1, uh, John uh, and PNK uh, of a AC Shanmugam has also got one seat. So that uh, more or less adds up 20 plus the rest of the allies, uh, I think 36, right? So also that we need to take into consideration OPS faction as well and uh, another minor party. So with all of this uh, developments here, do you feel that uh, Annamalai has managed to successfully woo away the ADMK's allies and uh, will they really manage to uh, uh, not just outperform themselves what the, the kind of uh, 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 seat share and vote share that they got in the last Lok Sabha elections but uh, will they be able to uh, do better than the ADMK itself at least uh, that as a target for the BJP. See Gautam there are two ways of looking at it. One is the BJP high command and the BJP state unit led by Mr. Anna Malai has successfully outdone the ADMK on the alliance question. So they have successfully weaned away most of the alliance partners who contested under the ADMK leadership to the BJP leadership now. Be it Patali Makalkat, which is a very influential party, um, commanding about 6% individual votes yes. among the dominant community of one years who form a dominant OBC community spread across uh, northern Tamil Nadu. So these, this is a major boost for the BJP. Mm -hmm. And the um, Tamil Manila Congress is another small party led by former Union Minister G.K. Vasan, who is also the son of late veteran congressman G.K. Mupanar. So you have parties like the AMMK, which is party as a strength will be very less, but mm -hmm. um, they might be able to get a lot of community votes to which Mr. Dinakaran belongs to, to the BJP. Okay. Not just in one constituency, but in about 10 to 12 constituencies. I'm not saying huge votes that they can bring, but they can bring some percentage of votes. That is okay. one thing for AMM. So where, when OPS also joins, it may, if, if Dinakaran can bring 3% votes, OPS will add another half a percent or 1%. All right. And just before I continue, uh, so friend, what's happening with uh, O Panir Salvam? Uh, because uh, he's unlikely to get the two leaf symbol. So, will he contest on a BJP ticket? Uh, how, what do you see happening with him? See, Panir Salvam has tied himself in knots. That has been his problem. His indecisiveness has been his problem since Jayalalitha died. He has not been. He has not even taken one one proper decision. Okay. I have not seen one proper, one decisive uh, <laughs> thing that O Panir Salam has taken in the past seven, seven years. See, mm -hmm. even a political fight with EPS, he converted it into a uh, legal battle. Mm -hmm. So you can keep on fighting your legal battles. Once you lost your political battle, then it's completely over. See, yeah. we, we are talking about a man who stood for Jayalalitha as chief minister twice, not once. Mm -hmm. And he was chosen as the chief minister for the third time immediately after Jayalalitha breath her last. Mm -hmm. And this man... Despite being as a deputy chief minister for four and a half years, Gautam mm. is 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 a political is a political heart today because of his own making. He did not get a support base for himself. See, he had a powerful finance portfolio with him. He yeah. could have held a lot of projects that were being implemented by the Adapadi Pandiswami government. Then he didn't do anything at all. He just enjoyed power, and mm. once the power went off. This man started uh, just because 
லைக் எடப்பாடி பழனிசாமி வாஸ் கேட் ஆஃப் சசிகலாஸ் அசென்ஷியல் பார்ட்டி இ கோட்டட் ஹிம் ஸோ ஃபைனலி வென் ஈ நியூ தட் மிஸ்டர் ஓபிஎஸ் வாஸ் மோர் ஆஃப் அ லைபிலிட்டி தேன் வாட் டு சேன் அசெட் இட் ஜஸ்ட் த்ரூ ஹிம் அவுட் ஆஃப் த பார்ட்டி so then mm-hmm. op realized that he didn't have any support in the party see hardly there are three or four mls with him whereas compare it with mr edapadi pani so me a 63 mls with him so like ops whatever is happening to ops today of his own making there is no one to be blamed and the bj cannot be blamed here because it is ops who kept uh quoting the bjp and not the other way around see the bjp oh. quoted him through mr hmm. guru murthy in 2017 when they wanted him to rebel against sashikala hmm. he did the rebellion but he was not able to get the support of the mla so so he couldn't become the chief minister edapadi pani swami became the chief minister he consolidated his position within the party within the government now he controls the party whether admk wins loses that is all irrelevant to this conversation hmm. ADMK is strongly and firmly behind Edapadi Pani Swami. That having okay. said, why didn't Silvam do all these things? He had all the time in the world to do, world to network, world to create a own support base for himself. He never did that. And now he wants the BJP to get him a symbol. He wants the BJP to get him two leaves. Well, is this BJP's problems? See, BJP also has to deal with a lot of things because... The, not not i'm not talking about the bjp after 2021 the bjp before 2021 want uh, broke and united the adm cat its whims and fancies mm-hmm. i just want to record it they wanted to break one they'll break they want to mm-hmm. unite they will unite again they want to break they will break again unite break unite this is what was happening for the past four and a half years see the bjp for the bjp losing the 2019 election it's not just because of an anti modi wave which bjp says was artificially generated or engineered by the dmk and alliance partners it was hmm. a real um, what to say real uh, uh, i call it a wave real sentiments which the people of tamil nadu felt that these people are making a mockery of the admk and mockery of the tamil nadu politics hmm <laughs> hmm so that But was what also uh, when you talk about that in 2019 there was annamalai there was no this sort of concentration uh, on tamil nadu was there uh, you know uh, even though they had an alliance they had pmk dmd dmk alliance but uh, is annamalai the real difference maker this time and to what extent do you see uh, because now that we know the uh, forms have been worked out now and uh, uh, will actually see because we have dmdk still with the admk this time and uh, we have ttv dinakaran with uh, uh, bjp uh, how will this actually play out in terms of uh, vote share will we see a lot of split ups uh, you know because they all go after the same sort of vote bank uh, who do you see this benefiting more in terms of uh, vote bank process also for that we'll have to wait for the results but i, I will i will give a broad picture of what what would happen no. see hmm. anamalai got whatever he wanted he wanted to come out of the admk alliance hmm. he is now come out of the admk alliance he hmm. wanted the bjp to be leader of the third front alliance he is now the leader of e or the bjp is now the leader of the third front he wanted hmm. to contest the bjp in about 20 seats he is contesting he has condensed all the alliance partners within 15 in uh, 19 seats he has done the bjp has given everything that he wanted now he left to walk his talk hmm. Hmm. but he has uh, been, he has uh, been uh, media hmm. uh, even the interview that he gave to me he told me that the bjp is about 20% uh, hmm. vote share so he has to just prove that this election hmm. is the way you validate whatever you have been saying so hmm. now all is firmly in the state bjp's court that they will have mm. to walk the talk yeah walking the talk is not mm. going to be i won't say it is even be difficult because when you mm. take like uh, when you have a pmk with you in northern tamil nadu yeah can actually hurt the prospects of admk in a number of constituencies mm. see mm. 
For example, let me tell you, if the PMK was part of the ADMK alliance in Northern Tamil Nadu, hmm. they could have made, they could have made at least half and DMK candidates sweat it out, swelter it out. That alliance was a formidable alliance in its pockets, if not across the state. Okay. That didn't happen. So that didn't happen. When PMK going to BJP is a boost to the DMK. Hmm. And it's such a setback to the AIA DMK. Correct. So, so it's not going to be an easy task for the ADMK to face this election. So like ADMK, see ADMK has problems in every region. Hmm. So they have a PMK problem in Northern Tamil Nadu. They have an Annamalai problem in Western Tamil Nadu. They have a TTV and an OPS problem in South Tamil Nadu. Hmm. It's not going to be easy for them. But for the BJP, like I said, they've got whatever they wanted. Now hmm. they will have Ensure that they get this percentage of vote that they have promised. Yeah. Because the high command gave whatever they wanted. So, mm. while doing all these things, the BJP, see, would say that there is an opinion that the BJP may emerge second in some constituency, which is true. But mm. it is not going to happen by default. Okay. The BJP has to work on the ground. BJP has to really work on the ground. And having said that, they are already working on the ground in a couple of constituencies. I know, for example, Coimbatore, they are working hard. Mm. Enkasi, they are working hard. Kanyakumari is a, definitely a stronghold of them. And they are already working hard there. They are working hard in Trinalveli. They are working mm. hard in Sivaganga. Mm. So all these constituencies, they have chosen. And they are working there for the past one to one and a half years. In some constituencies, it's even two years. So all this hard work has to result in votes, has to get converted into votes. Because people may trust you, but they may not vote you. Yeah. So that is where the BJP's challenge lies today. To right. ensure so, that... Mm. Uh, and let me also tell you, the 20 percentage, 20 percentage vote per vote share that the BJP is projecting to me it looks a bit of an exaggeration <laughs> all right still stand by the city still a bit so, of an exaggeration. So, hmm. no, to me it looks like a bit of an exaggeration and the BJP overestimating itself and I did post this question to Mr. Annamala in the interview he responded hmm. in his own style saying that there is nothing wrong in overestimating see I'm not <laughs> saying what I haven't hmm. already written or anything Correct. So basically, yeah. BJP is trying to protect itself as a second force after the DMK alliance in Tamil Nadu. Mm. Project it till elections, but for them to do the same after the elections, they need to prove that they are the number two. Yeah. And that validation will come only through the vote share or the seat that you win. Right. So that uh, Siva, uh, as much as the BJP needs to prove their mettle in terms of uh, they can emerge as the uh, second leading party in Tamil Nadu. What about his leadership? Uh, are there enough questions being asked about him? Or what he is doing to really revive the ADMK's fortunes here? Uh, uh, he has just announced his uh, 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 constituencies and the uh, uh, candidates as well. Uh, but is he is really uh, ready to fight it out uh, and fight dirty if necessary to really protect uh, the in case chances in the slopes of elections. See, Gautam, uh, for the ADM 2024, they think it's not a battle at all. Okay. They are concentrating only on 2026. They may be missing the 2024 bus, but they don't seem to be bothered about it. There are consequences. Hmm. There are consequences. Once, if they lose, hmm. in the event of them losing the elections, there will certainly questions about Mr. Edapadi Bani Swami's leadership. Yes. But the ADMK will have to find another leader. No, it's not mm. going to be an easy task. Mm. So then they may they they may try to be together. Mm. So, and and moreover, I personally feel the real test for the AD the the, the real way of testing ADMK's <laughs> electoral fortunes or their strength is assembly elections. Okay. 
not the Lok Sabha poll. I'm not saying that Lok Sabha polls is irrelevant. But ADMK being a predominantly regional party and without prime ministerial candidate, the party may not be performing well or as being expected by others in this election. But the real challenge for Parani Swami is to keep the party united till 2026. If he keeps the party united till 2026 and the BJP doesn't perform well or perform according to it and Mr. Swami in 2026 might be able to, I'm saying might be able to attract new allies, even that you know, those allies may be from the DMK alliance also. But challenge is to keep the party alive till 2026. And I personally believe that the ADMK's vote share has not shrunk much as we speak. That okay. A significant portion of the vote bank that the ADMK possesses is silent, has gone mm. silent, not mm. voting. Okay. Whether that that silent minority or majority or whatever call it, that silent portion of the ADMK vote bank, whether they vote this time or they continue to be silent is said to be. And mm. see the BJP's uh, way of um, who the AI ADMK votes, not the AI votes, ADMK supporters like praising Jayalalitha, praising MG Ramachandran and so on. Jayalalitha did not come to power only just because ADMK CAD has voted for her. There have been mm. Jayalalitha supporters yeah. who, who are primarily DMK haters. See, here the politics is very simple. Pro-DMK or anti-DMK. Okay. That is how it has been for the past 70 years. The center, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, mm. is, there, is only, there is only two political parties here. Anti-DMK parties and pro-DMK parties. Okay. But it's how the politics here has been. Mm. Till Mr. Karnanath was there, it was only about the personality. Anti-Karnanath, pro-Karnanath. It was simple. Hmm. There was not even one day in the last 50 years, as long as Mr. Karnanadi was alive, without a statement being printed on a newspaper. Hmm. Without television channels discussing his statements or discussing his remarks. See, that's the kind of imposing presence that he had. So, like, it is not just about parties or anything, but here it is all about your, your side with the DMK side with the DMK. That is why the BJP is also making DMK its pivotal or the prime enemy or the prime mm -hmm. Yes. And like you said, uh, the point that you raised, it's all about the kind of presence uh, you know, that attract voters. You like, uh, And as you mentioned, Karunanidhi was there, Jailalitha was the next big personality. Is Tamil Nadu waiting uh, its next big personality? Uh, has uh, M really filled that sort of uh, personality equation or not? Uh, or is Annamalai going to be that sort of person? Uh, what do you sort of work in this uh, sort of context? See, Stalin, as such, is now the tallest leader in Nadu. There is no doubt about it. Hmm. Because after the 2021 elections, the way he has projected himself, he has projected himself, he projects himself as a Not many people expected him to practice kind of very politics because Tamil Nadu may have may be a developed state may have be may have full social indexes and so on but when it comes to political decency it was at its lowest ebb because Karnanadi and Lalita never shared a very good relationship see eye to eye and credit of heralding a new relationship or a new political decency should go to Mr. M.K. Stalin and Edapadi Paniswami equally they kind of created a new atmosphere in Tamil Nadu where the opposition leader, chief minister engages with each other on a variety of issues. Mm -hmm. Mr. Edapadi Paniswami opened the door of the Fort St. George of the chief mm -hmm. minister's office to Stalin in 2008 when he wanted to meet him and give him a memorandum. Okay. And Stalin reciprocated that by visiting Edapadi Paniswami's official residence when his mother died. So like this, these two gentlemen, they actually took serious efforts to bring in the political decency into the state. 
Hmm. Whether anomaly will, em will emerge as a mass leader or not, that only time will tell. Hmm. Because he is in the very prime of his career, in the beginning stage of his career, has been three years into politics, right. and yeah. this is the election as the president of the BJP. So I yes. think there is a long way for him to go. But hmm. nevertheless, there is a lot of traction that he is getting among youngsters, among women, and so on. But Having no government order, whether all those will convert it to votes in this election or in the next election, I really can't say. All right. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sivapriyan, for uh, sharing your insights on what's, what could probably happen in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. What could uh, the voters of the Tamil Nadu state be thinking about here? Is uh, uh, Anamalai's popularity really going to convert into votes or not? That is something that remains to be seen. For the time being, thank you so much for joining us on this. Thank discussion. you, sir. Thank you, sir.